In this video, I'm going to show you how to use SharePoint as the file location for generative answers and how to configure the security correctly. We'll first start with creating ourselves a new copilot. We'll just enter the name here. I'm going to go into the advanced settings and turn off the lesson topics and select a custom icon. Then we just hit create. We'll wait for our copilot to finish provisioning, as you can see above. And now that it's done provisioning, we'll go over to the Generative AI tab, and we're going to turn on Boost Conversational Coverage with Generative Answers and make sure that we save this. We'll come in and we'll need to go get our SharePoint site location. In SharePoint, I've created an HR site with my HR docs located here. In this document library, you can see I have a couple of files that are below 3 megabytes in size. I will need to grab this part of the URL to make sure that I have the information about the SharePoint site. I switch over to Copilot Studio and place it in and hit Add. And then I'll make sure that I save this. Inside of Copilot Studio, we will now expand the settings and we will go to the Security tab. In the Security tab, we select Authentication and select Manual. Notice that this will have configuration that we need to fill in. We will now need to switch over to the Azure portal and add an app registration for Active Directory. We'll first create a name in our new registration. We will then choose that we want to do any organizational directory multi-tenant. Now we'll click Register. Now that we've created our new app registration, the first thing we want to do is grab the application client ID and we'll just copy it to clipboard by clicking here. Go back into your implementation for your copilot and put your client ID in the client ID location. Now we switch back over to the Azure portal. We will then go to the authentication tab in the Azure portal and we will click Add Platform. From here we will choose Web, and here you will need to configure the redirect URI. The URI redirect location is provided in the documentation that will be located in the notes of this video, so make sure that you go grab it. I've already grabbed it all for this video, and I'm going to paste it in right here. This is the one for the US. We then check both access tokens and ID tokens, and then click Configure. We will now need to configure the Certificates and Secrets section. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now we will click a new client secret. We will give it a description. You can select how long you want it to last. I do 730 days or 24 months just to make it easy so I don't have to renew this all the time. And then you click Add. Now once you've got this, you need to know that you're going to get different pieces of information. The key piece of information here is going to be the value. So let's just go ahead and click Copy to copy it. We switch back over and then we paste in our client secret into this location within the authentication section. We will switch back to the tab for the Azure portal and we will click on API permissions and we're going to go ahead and we're going to grant consent for PVA demos. You'll click yes. So now we'll add permission 
and then we'll choose the graph. You'll choose delegated permissions. Now we'll scroll down and we will select open ID as the item and profile as the item that we want to add as permissions. And we'll go ahead and add these permissions really quick. You'll see that here everything has been added as we wanted before. Now we're going to have to go add the scope. So you'll do expose an API and then click add a scope. You can leave the application ID URI just as it is here and simply just click save and continue. Now the next thing is we'll have to give the scope a name. We will call the name here test.read and we will make sure that we do admins and users on who can consent. We will then give a content display name. All of this is in the documentation for this, so you can just simply use what they call, which is test.read. And then even the admin consent description is something available in the documentation. You can simply grab it and paste it right in, as you'll see me do here. And make sure that your state is set to enabled, and we'll hit add scope. We'll now add a few more API permissions and we'll go back in and hit add permission again. We'll select the Microsoft graph and delegated permissions. We'll scroll down here and we'll find file. And you'll select files and you will do files read all. Once you have this, we'll continue to scroll down, looking for our next permission to be set, which is sites. We'll expand sites and we will do sites read all, and then we will simply hit add permissions. As you can see, it added the additional permissions. Now that we've completed that configuration, we'll switch back over to our Copilot Studio, and we will need to add the additional scopes that are required here. And you'll just simply put a space and you'll add the additional scopes that are needed as you see here. The additional scopes are sites.read.all, and then do another space and do files.read.all. This will give you the additional configuration of the scopes that are needed for SharePoint to work. Now we'll click save and we'll hit save again because there's a warning saying we need to publish. So now we'll close this and we'll move over to publish. We'll go ahead and hit publish. Know that it will not save your configuration. This won't test properly if you don't publish. So go ahead and hit publish and let that complete. So now that our publishing has been completed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to go over and refresh the test chat. When you refresh the test chat, you will then see that it's going to say you need to log in. So you can click log in. Then you're going to need to consent on the behalf of your organization and hit accept. You'll need to copy the code that it gives you so that you can log in, paste the code in, and now that we've done this, we can ask our question to our copilot. Notice that after a refresh, you won't have to authenticate again, so we can just ask a question like, what is our travel policy? And you'll see that now it will actually answer the question about the travel policy. Now there are a couple of additional things you should be aware of when dealing with SharePoint. SharePoint by default is going to use the Graph API for your search. However, if you are going to be someone who 
ON's M365 Copilot, one of the benefits of M365 Copilot is the ability to get semantic index, which is going to give you the ability to not just be able to search these files, but also to vectorize them and chunk them, which will give you higher levels of quality out of SharePoint content and increase the ability for you to find this stuff in a much more efficient way. I hope you found this video interesting. Feel free to like and subscribe to my channel to find more educational videos such as this, as well as other additional content around just general education around conversational AI. Please also go out and try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.